Greetings, travelers. Welcome to the Hidden Outpost, where we learn the mysteries of God and the mysteries of Flatland BMX. One thing I will say before I put this on the stand is that I think one of the interesting things about Flatland BMX is that I mean, generally you want to learn it on a complete level ground. That's actually why I've been riding in the garage instead of outside. Well, it's actually now cooler in the, in the garage than outside, but as, as well as that. But uh, you can learn a lot of these tricks not on level ground. I've seen people do a bunch of these tricks uh, not on level ground. You can, you know, but the thing is, is if you learn it on level ground, it takes away a variable because if you put a variable into learning flatland, um, it just makes it so much harder. So imagine like you're doing a balance trick and you're doing it on a sloped surface. You, you're gonna have, there's another variable that you're putting in. And th that's another reason why um, if you see me, like you know how I'm always like pumping up my tires right in the beginning? Well, the reason why is I learned that from watching like pro flatlanders and that's what they do all the time. They always check their PSI. Because the thing is, is that you want to, you want to have a consistent variable, and that's another reason why you want to ride, you want to find a level surface to a level plane, plane to ride on. So you know you have a consistent variable of what you're trying to do, you know. And it makes that I don't know. That's what I learned from observing uh, the people that got me into Flatland. And I wish somebody would have told me that a long time ago. <laughs> That, that you know the whole crazy the crazy thing about it is that it took me moving out to Long Beach to even meet my first flatlander. Like what in the world? Like you know, it's like strange. So that's actually another reason why I kind of wanted to start streaming as well. Because uh, if I would have gotten shown like flatland like when I was younger, I probably would have gotten into like learned it a little bit more. But I just didn't know anybody. You know, it was like so. Anyway, let's um. Let's honor the Lord, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And we're going to seek first the kingdom of God. I almost got a, on a little tangent over there. Let's see here. Um, so if you don't want to hear uh, God's word, I guess I'd skip the next um, 20 to 14 minutes. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, there was a verse I was kind of thinking of. I kind of wanted to, uh, to uh, cover. I, I, I kept thinking of it last night. Um, okay. It's uh, John 14.6. Jesus saith, saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Interesting. Um, let's see, John 14, let's look at that chapter now. Uh, do, 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 do. Hmm, let's see here. Okay. Okay, let, 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 I guess I should just read the entire chapter, right? Let's see what we can get. All right. Or maybe part of the chapter, or like kind of the first things in front of it and then after it, right? Okay. John chapter 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If, we're, if it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. What does that mean? So does God go, well, I guess God goes before us and he's like, there's that, there's that, uh, so if you go to a lot of churches or just hear a lot of pastors, one, like, it's actually not in the Bible. It's kind of interesting, but there's a, um, a phrase that comes up. I think if you brought it up to any pastor, they'd be, okay, I heard that, you know, it's like, I've heard it too. So it's like, this phrase is, uh, God makes ways where are there, where there are no ways. And I think it stemmed from some verses, um, but also not only stemmed from verses, 
it's stemmed from stories of the Bible. There's a lot of stories in the Bible where prophets, believers, they were in just these crazy situations, you know, and like just absurd situations and, you know, God made a way for them. Okay, let's continue going. And I go, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are, go are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, see, that's an interesting one because I like read like, kind of like had that verse kind of come up in my mind and I like at the end he says the and the life you know the way the truth and the life okay let's, let's continue and then we'll read a commentary on this if you had known me you would also have known my father also from now on you do know him and have seen him Philip said to him Lord show us the father and it is enough for us Jesus said to him have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. So that's kind of interesting because, okay, so I might have this wrong, but I'm is I think the God of the Old Testament is I mean I get I, I don't know take my order salt. I might even be wrong I don't know I don't even remember but I think I had a conversation with somebody I don't even remember it but I'm gonna just spurt it out there I guess since it kind of reminds me that someone said like I might be wrong I don't know they might be wrong I don't know I heard this somewhere but someone said like the father was the old the was the uh god of the old testament and then his son became the uh in in under the new covenant under jesus christ um he became like i don't know the the triune of the holy spirit and the father and the lord jesus christ something like that i don't know i got that totally wrong maybe but believe me that i am in the father and the father is in me or else believe on account of the works themselves Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do also do the works that I do, and greater than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Now, that is such an interesting verse. So we're going to have to go into that one, like, heavy. Like, that one's like... It, okay, so here's the thing. Is this a call for every believer, or is this just... I don't know, you know? Like, it says, truly, truly, I say to you, Whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these he will do, because I am going to the Father. So it says, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do also do the works that I do. So what happens if there's a bunch of believers and they're not doing the they're not doing what this verse I don't know, man, that trips me out. I don't know, maybe I'm reading it wrong. I don't know, we're going to have to do, or, see, here's the thing, is I, I wanted to just do a commentary on this one in the front, but now we're getting into all these other ones. Okay, let's just keep going. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees nor knows him, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. Because, but you will see me, because I live. You also will live. And that day you will know that I am in my father and you in me and i in you whoever has my commandments and keeps them he is keeps them he it is who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father 
and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Interesting. <clears throat> so I'm wondering, like, hmm, manifest myself to him. So that reminds me, this whole verse right here reminds me of the word devotion, you know? So basically there's like devotion that we need for Jesus Christ to, I guess maybe manifest, well, I guess there's subtle little hints too that you could take, you know, like subtle little things and keep following them and following them and following them, you know, just keep, keep trying to seek first the kingdom of God and, you know, but it'll, I think later, like the more you get into it, the more like there's like, I don't want to call it levels, but like, I don't know, like, I guess like devotion, uh, I, I don't know. That's, that's the word I think of when I read that verse. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, Judas, not Iscarot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You hear, you heard me say to you, I am going away. I will come to you if you loved me. You would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you that before it takes place so that when it does take place, you may believe. Interesting. So this, and now I have told you before it takes place so that when it does take place, you may believe. So that's an interesting one right there too. Like, so Jesus is like said that these things are going to happen, you know? And it's like, and he, he kind of, well, I don't know, maybe I might be taking it wrong, but for me, when I read that verse, it's like Jesus told these things that were uh, to occur. And he said that. So when they do occur, it's like, dude what in the world man that is a trip i can't even like you know it's like so there's been so many times where it's been like that or something it's been really odd it's been profound actually i will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming he has no claim on me okay so it's interesting so he says i will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world now it's in other translations, I think, or in other chapters, it says, so the ruler of this world is Satan. And he has be and it's strange. We went in a study on that, and it's like, I feel like I need to keep studying on that. Um, because it's weird, because Satan comes masquerading as an angel of light. And that, in order to deceive people. But it's weird, because it says, you know, like, for the ruler of the, this world is coming, he has no claim on me. But I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. Okay, we'll go into a little bit of chapter 15, because I have this little bit underlined. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it may bear more fruit. See, this, this whole, like, part of chapter 15 right here, this one just trips me out right here, man. Like, that one is just such a, you know, because what if, like, you know, what if, like, uh, I mean, what if, like, uh, believers just, man, man, I'm not talking about every believer, but just a lot of believers, if we, what if we got to the point where just all of us collectively just couldn't, we just weren't bearing that much fruit, you know, like, it's, uh, I don't know. So maybe, I don't know, maybe that's when, like, I guess God's doing something, you right? See, that one always reminds me of Trent's, like, the whole tree thing, too. Every branch in me 
that does not bear that's so like weird to say that every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes that it may be more fruitful that it be, that it may bear more fruit now i just want to make a whole study on that one right anyway oh wait let's keep going because i have this part underlined too already you are clean because of the word that i have spoken to you abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches whoever abides in me and i in him, i in him he is that bears much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing that is very weird. That one's very strange because what if there's a bunch of believers where you can't tell their fruits, you know? Is is that can that happen? Is is that is that ever an occurrence where you can't tell a fruit of a person? Because there's also it reminds me of the study we did a couple maybe like a week ago and it was like saying something along the lines of you know about the demons masquerading as wolves in sheep's clothing or like the false prophets or something like that they're 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 masquerading as wolves in sheep's clothing they're literally like like demons like literally guised as believer like christians it's so weird to think i know it sounds completely bizarre to say that but like there are christians out there that are literally demons and they're like literally wanting people to be led astray they want people not to believe they're acting like believers but they don't want people to really believe they're trying to do the opposite of that and then it's and then jesus says something like you will know them by their fruits you know and then what ends up happening if we can't tell people by their fruits because everybody's just hiding them away or something like that you know i don't know that's what i think anyway i don't know if it's right we're just trying to do a little straight now okay so this was just me and just like well not me but like just the me reading this these these verses right here but now we're going to go into like reading a commentary let's see what somebody says i want to see what this one says jesus said to him i am the way the truth and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except for me i want to read a commentary on that so we're going to read a commentary on that one i kind of wanted to like just read a commentary on that you know like but then i it's good that we went into other ones because we, we could go into reading commentaries i mean there's so many things we could look into you know like i'm just curious now i'm, I'm curious to see like what other you know especially this one too the branch one you know the bearing fruit you know it's like because here's the thing is that it seems for from my observations it seems that like a f I think a lot of people think of a fruit as just our words or like our actions or you know like it just like but I think a lot of people I think words can be like especially since me asking a lot of questions on like a lot of verses it's actually kind of like because at first I used to think oh well words are like our main fruit right like because it's basically from our heart our mouth speaks or something like that but also like from asking so many questions like about like so many verses i have come to realize that there's a there can be words that we speak there could be believers that can actually use like words that seem like they truly truly believe and like but the thing is is that you can't really look deeper into what they're really doing you know like it's in some sense words can also be like um you know like you can kind of talk the talk you know but like can there be is there any other like fruits and you know and sometimes i feel like it's hard to like especially from the answers i've gotten there's been some answers that i'm like wait a minute that's not i don't know man that doesn't sound i don't know that sounds like i don't know there is, there's been so many answers that I've gotten from people. I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. That sounds like kind of strange, you know? Like, I don't really... And then I like try and look deeper and it's like, I don't know like who this person is. Like, I don't know like, like who are you, man? Like, <laughs> why am I supposed to, you know, I don't know. It's just weird, like, so I think that's something to be wary of as well. 
But we're gonna look, okay, anyway. We're getting so a little bit off track. Let's see here. Um, okay, what is this? John 14, 6. John 14, 6. Commentary. Kind of wondering how they put these commentaries up. You think that there would be a lot more because there was a time when I read the Life Application Bible out in Long Beach. It's kind of funny. I actually read that Bible in Barnes and Noble, like the whole thing. <laughs> like I didn't even buy it. Like I just read the <laughs> Life Application Bible in Barnes and Noble. It's kind of funny. Okay, let's see here. Which one? I guess we'll just start with the first one, right? Ellicott's commentary. I'm kind of wondering. Wait, what is this guy going to talk about? I am the way. The pronoun is emphatic. I and none beside, besides me. The way is again made prominent, reversing the order which Thomas had used. He and he is the means through which men can approach to the Father. The truth and the life. Better and the truth and the life. The thought of his being the way through which men come to the Father is the reverse side of the thought, that in him the Father is revealed to men, that he is himself the eternal truth, that he is himself the source of eternal life. He, they, had they known what his earlier words meant, they would have, they would had, have had other than temporal and local thoughts of the Father's house and would have known him to be the way. That one's kind of confusing. I guess that's, let's, let me read this again. They would have had other than temporal and local thoughts of the, okay, interesting. Uh, no man cometh under the Father but by me. This was the f answer to the doubt of Thomas. This was the true wither, which they knew not. The thought of heaven is not a place far above, or of a time, time far before, but of a state now and hereafter. Whoa, that's weird. I've never heard anybody say that. To receive the truth and the life revealed in the presence of the Son is to come to the Father by the way, by the only way to be, to be the Father is home. What in the world? I've never heard a single pastor say that. The thought of heaven is not of a place far above or of a time far before, but of a state now. Is that, I don't know. I'm wondering what other believers think about this. What do you, what, I mean, they have it on this, they have this Bible commentary literally on the one with all the different translations. Like, look at all these different commentaries. But I've never I don't know, I haven't really heard a, a pastor really say that, you know, because every time they, you know, everybody, I, I, generally I think when people say, oh, the heaven, you know, you go to heaven when you die, but this guy says, I need to read this again, that's a trip, that's so weird, I was not expecting to read that today, the thought of heaven is not of a place far above or of a time far, far before, but of, a, but of a state now and hereafter. So it's, huh, that's interesting. I'm, I'm wondering what other pastors think of that one, huh? I guess we'll read another one. We'll read one more. Let's see. Let's see what this one says. Matthew Henry's commentary. Here are three words, upon any of which stress may be laid, upon the word troubled, be not cast down and disquieted. The word heart. Let your heart be kept with the full trust in God. The word your. However, others are overwhelmed with the sorrows of this present time. Be you. Be not you so. <laughs> it's like a. Be. Be not you so. That's such a strange. Wordage. This guy must be from way back in the day, huh? Christ's disciples more than others should keep their minds quiet when when everything else is unquiet. I like that. Here is the remedy against this trouble of mind. Believe. Period. 
by believing in Christ as the mediator between God and man, we gain comfort. The happiness of heaven is spoken of as in a father's house. There are many mansions, for there are many sons to be brought to glory. Mansions are lasting dwellings. Christ will be the finisher of that of which he is the author or beginner. If he have prepared the place for us, he will prepare us for it. Christ is the sinner's way to the Father and to heaven. In his person as God manifests in flesh, in his atoning sacrifice, and our advocate. He is the truth as fulfilling all the prophecies of the Savior, believing which sinners come by him the way. He is the life, by whose life-giving spirit the dead in sin are quickened. Nor can any man draw nigh God as a father who is not quickened by him as the life, and taught by him as the truth, to come by him as the way. By Christ as the way our prayers go to God, and his blessings come to us. This is the way that leads to rest, the good old way. He is the resurrection and the life. All that saw Christ by faith saw the Father in him. In the light of Christ's doctrine, they saw God as the Father of lights, and in Christ's miracles, they saw God as the God of power. The holiness of God shone in spotless purity of Christ's life. We are to believe the revelation of God to man in Christ, for the works of the Redeemer show forth his own glory and God in him. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Intriguing. I kind of want to just keep reading more and more of these because there's a lot of them, man, especially for this verse. Look, I'm, I barely hit even a few of them, honestly. But we'll leave it at that. Maybe we'll do... You know, here's the other thing. is It's not like I... You know, honestly, it's not like I have to just keep doing different verses every day. We could just do this tomorrow, too. You know, do that one, the same one, you know? Like, look deeper into it. Like, I mean, it could go so far as looking deeper into it than, you know, looking up sermons about it. That's the... I think, for me, personally, that's how I liked to study Scripture. Especially, like, say some... So one of the ways that I like to, to study scripture is when there's some sort of turmoil, like if you're going through depression, anxiety, anger, fear, uh, envying, coveting, if you're jealous, if you're, uh, I don't know, what else did I not say? Anxiety, um, I don't know what else, I, uh, any, any, any just thoughts that you're having in your own life. You know, what I do, what I did, well I still do actually sometimes, and is I you, you I go to YouTube and I just put in whatever that thought is or whatever or whatever the problem is or whatever's going on and I put sermon at the end of it and at this point in my walk I, in this season God has me in it's like I'm kind of like I guess like multi-denominational so I really don't care what like do not you know as long as they're professing Jesus you know that's cool with me um, but like you know, I, you know, and just, and just see the, the sermons that come up, you know, and just like listen to a lot of them, you know, and, and just see like what, uh, you know, maybe get an overview because, you know, there are sometimes wolves in sheep's clothing, there are, you know, so sometimes you can't, but if you listen to a lot of them, you know, and they all kind of like, you know, kind of collectively, you know, build you up, then I think that there's something to be learned in that. Um, Anyway, I guess that will be the end of this Bible study thing. Bible study, devotional, uh, somewhat seeking first the kingdom of God or something like that. Um, yeah. 
And that was the Bible study today. And now we're going to do a card reading. Let's see what cards we draw. Let's shuffle this up. Um, okay, let's see here. What was I going to do? I actually might... Today seems a lot less hot. That's actually why I'm wearing a shirt. Normally, like, it's, like, so hot where I literally, like, cannot even, like, wear a shirt. Otherwise, I'm just going to get dehydrated. <laughs> Let's see the temperature. Oh, well, it's 90. Okay, well. <laughs> it's so crazy that it's 90 degrees. I feel like it's, like, way cooler because it's been in, like, double digits. Like, so it's been, like, it's so crazy that it's, like, 90. I, I still might even just end up taking off my shirt if it gets too hot, but. Hopefully nobody said anything so far. Okay, cool. It always, it's always a little awkward when I go behind the, the thing and someone's talked and I'm just like going off and I'm not even like saying anything. I apologize. Uh, so yeah, Seeking First the Kingdom of God. I, man, I probably should just keep studying on that as well, you know, because uh, I don't know if I'm doing it correctly. I'm wondering, like, can you seek first the kingdom of God in anything? You know, like these cards, the bike, whatever, you know, like. That's what I, that's what I like to try and think, you know, because even the flatland tricks, I will say the flatland tricks that I'm learning, a lot of them, there was other belief. I mean, a lot of the tricks, like, you know, everybody kind of, well, not everybody, but, you know, like a lot of flatlanders do, you know, but there are some tricks in particular that for some odd reason there were believers well, two believers that were doing it, and they both, like, would proclaim the gospel in their edits and stuff, and I'm just like, huh, that's weird. Then you guys both do stick be no anders? All right, well, that's odd. All right, well, I guess we're going to learn that. That was the trick that, like, really got me into Flatland. I was like, wait a minute. Like, I don't know if, like, God revealed that to me. Like, out of the sea of people that ride BMX, it's like, I don't know if God just showed me these two riders that we're both doing that trick and I'm like okay well that's odd and they're both proclaiming the gospel in a little even just a subtle degree you know even just a little bit um, but then some of their tricks is, they're just too hard there, there's some combos that it's just I've given up I mean eventually maybe I'll learn them but like I don't know for some reason like the front wheel tricks are really man I don't know why I'm so bad at them. They take for they take me so long to learn, man. It's just like I don't know, man. I, I have heard that some riders are more prone to being a front wheel rider or a back wheel rider. Um, I kind of want to be in the middle, and it's kind of a pain because like, well, not like oh, I guess yeah, like I want to do front wheel tricks and back wheel tricks, but you know, it's like. I want to get into doing the front wheel tricks into like a back wheel trick. That would be cool. Like, I keep dropping these cards. But today, I think we're going to continue going with just grinding the backyard. That, I, if you're out there and you're wanting to learn the locomotive, uh, that is probably. I don't know. The thing is, I should have learned, if I could maybe go back, but I don't know, like, I probably should have learned the regular foot generator and not learn it switch foot because I see a lot of people that do the backyard now, like, and they always do it with that foot. And I don't know why they do it with that foot, but like, I don't know. They always just do it with that foot. And that's like, the only thing is I'm wondering if they're opposite spin because they always spin this way, but I don't spin that way, so I always spin this way. So I don't know. I guess that's one thing Flatland, a Flatlander hasn't really taught me. Like, are there tricks where I need to go switch? You know, because from my riding, like street and park and stuff like that, you're always wanting to learn the tricks that are your way of spinning. So this was clockwise, so... That's what tripped me out, and that's why I'm learning the backyard like this, because it spins me this way. But then everybody that I see, they always spin the other way, but they use the other foot. I don't know. It's weird. I'm like, I don't know. 
I don't know if they're like left foot forward and they don't, I don't know, it's straight. That's the other weird thing about Flatland is that like, I don't know, no one's actually really ever, ever talked to me about that. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. So I don't know. I'm just shuffling these good. Yesterday I, I kind of drew a bunch of cards that were I already drew in the previous hand, so. I'm hoping some more riders start doing this these streams, man. Like, I think it'll eventually happen. I mean, that's the other thing. Is like, I'm wondering, like, man, like, there should be way more, like, Flatlanders. I think it'd be really cool to see, like, what if just all the Flatlanders just started live streaming? That'd be crazy. Or what if like all the Believers just started live streaming? That would be intense, man. That'd be so wild. Like, I can only imagine like, like I'm thinking every Believer with a phone could probably do it. You know, not even like, it's not even like you have to show your face. You probably just do what I'm doing right now. You know, just have your hands right here, just have the Bible and just read a chapter or something like that. Do a, do a study. Like that would be really interesting. That would be very, very interesting to see. Um, and I think, I mean, that's something, I think, something with, like, the work of the Lord or something like that. Something about the work of the Lord. We're going to have to go into it, but... I wonder if that's a fruit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do this. up enough I guess we'll do one cut now <laughs> as a final what are the cards I'm s that's the other thing it's like so since I've shuffled this up and it's not like I pre-planned this out these are literally the cards that are shuffled up these eight cards in the front I have not pre-planned out and I think that's just the other thing that I like about doing this it's just like that's the other thing I liked about living in Long Beach you know is because it's almost like this sense of like, you go out and you're just like, you're not sure what you're gonna see. You know, it's just like, there's always something new. I always loved, in some degree, I like seeing all the homeless. I know a lot of people get, I know like, you know, there's a lot of bad talk about the homeless people out there and stuff, but you know, I honestly liked it. It, it kept me humble. Here's the weird thing. Okay, now we're gonna get into a whole nother tangent. So I used to live in Long Beach, I used to live in my car. I don't like to even say I was homeless in some degree, but I did live out there for three and a half years in my car. It was kind of bizarre. I wouldn't even consider that homeless because that, that was a, you, you think of a car and that's actually really good shelter. Wind, rain, freaking, you know, that's basically a mobile home right there, man. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but like, it's, but the thing is, is when you're out there and you see people literally living outside, you know, like that I think is like true homeless. Like you're just like, it's just so bizarre, man. Like, that's what kept me going, because I'm like, I was like complaining, like living in my car, I'm like, oh, like, oh, this is terrible, I don't even want to do this. And then there'd just be like some homeless guy living out there, just living it up, he's all happy, and I'm just like, what in the world, man? Like, that is just the most paradoxical thing. Like, how is that guy happy living like that? It's like, I don't even, and I'm like sitting there complaining and stuff, and, oh, that's a trip. Um, but that's another reason why I kind of liked Long Beach a lot because seeing so many homeless people, it keeps you humble about your situation because like, just like that very situation right there, like imagine you getting pissed off, like you getting pissed off, like, cause like, cause I saw people, you know, it's like, I even went through it. It's like, you get pissed off over something and then like, and then just some homeless guy just walks by you, you know, they don't have anything. And you're like, oh man, dude, why am I even, why am I even angry that I don't even have this thing or this is going on when that guy right out there doesn't have anything? It's like, why am I even complaining? You know, like it's like, and it kind of keeps me, it kind of keeps you humble in some degree. I don't know. That's what I think anyway. That's what I experienced, and in some degree, like I think there can be, like a sense of, 
I've heard some pastors say like keeping up with the Joneses. So like say you live in a community and you're kind of, everybody's kind of living the same. Sometimes you want to live like everybody else because you don't want to be like, you know, like, you know. So yeah, there's, there, there, that is one thing like pastors have, uh, I have heard them say something like that, like keeping up with the Joneses. And sometimes I even feel that way to some degree. And it's like, I don't even, sometimes these thoughts and stuff, they don't even, they're so subtle that you don't even realize they're occurring. Anyway, I don't even, man, I get on so many tangents, huh? Okay, let's see here. What cards will, what will the cards unveil? First card. Oh, <laughs> oh I love this card. Okay, look, let's look at it. Okay, hollowed ground. I will say this card has a very special sentiment to me. I, I actually think I got this card in Long Beach. Did I get this? I might have got this card in Long I'm pretty, or I might have got it in Noble. I can't remember. I got a, I get, yeah, I can't remember. I don't know. Anyway, what's odd about this card is that this is the only MTG card. I'm, I mean, I haven't seen every MTG card, but this is the only MTG card that I have personally with a definitive cross in the artwork. Look at that. That is a definitive cross on that cabin. Like, it is no, like, hiding away. Like, that is, like, a... And it's so crazy, man, because, like, I know Magic wouldn't even allow... They probably wouldn't even allow that anymore. It's so funny. There's so many companies that would be like, nah, dude, nah, we ain't doing that. You gotta, that, that's, that's the other weird thing that I've noticed is like back in the 90s, like this was, this came out in 1995, um, man, but it's like even like going and playing like, okay, so I had this like kind of this, this card always kind of reminds me of stuff like this, but like playing Diablo 1 and Diablo 2, what the biggest distinction I saw even from the gameplay, but Diablo 3, they stopped putting the cross in it. I don't know why they changed it. They, they like put the cross to where it was like this cross like this. It was like a cross, and then it was a cross like like that. It was like, it was like it looked kind of like a cross, but they could get away with it saying it's not a cross. You know, whereas like Diablo one and Diablo two, it was like boom, like a definitive cross. Like you know that's a cross. Like there is no hold bar. Like you know you can see that a mile away. Like it's like. You know, and that's what was like really gnarly about it to me. Even after like looking back at it, I'm like, man, dude, that symbol is just like, oh, it's so like bold, you know? Anyway, and that's why I like this card. Hollowed ground. Very interesting. So many companies, man. I, I, I literally, I legitimately think if Magic was, if that was, the, if there was a normal art director, they'd be like, uh, yeah, that's gonna be a liability. We ain't gonna, yeah, probably, you're not gonna be, you're gonna have to, uh, you know, that's what no, normal companies would probably be like nowadays, but I guess not in 1995, huh? Planes. I like this card. Giant Storm. Okay, number two. Elvish Visionary. Kind of reminds this. This kind of reminds me of the verse that we read today. So this is the flavor text on this one says, "From a tiny sprout, the greatest trees grow and flourish. May the seeds of your mind be equally fruitful." Man, that is so like very uh, reminiscent of scripture, huh? Before. Angelic Destiny. The funny thing about Angelic Destiny <laughs> is Yana Shamir and Johannes Vaz painted this card. And what's funny is I actually studied it with these people on conceptart.org when it was a thing on the internet. It's 
cool. Those two were from Germany. I wonder what they're doing now. Number five. Oh, I haven't drawn this card in a while. Holy strength. Planes. Oh man, this this clipper thing is like too powerful. It's like bugging out my phone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Healing leaves. I like the art on that one. That was cool. Good artwork on that one. Number. Okay, this is the last card. Oh, sweet. Interesting. It's so weird how like, I've never drawn the same hand, you know? Like every hand is always a little different. I, that's why I like doing this too. Personal Sanctuary. A paladin. Yeah, it's, it's always interesting, man. I've never, since I've actually started this, like literally, I've, these are, I've probably changed these cards out a little bit, but like, since I've started doing this, like, I wonder, like, the possibilities of drawing the exact same cards, the exact same number, exactly, you know, even drawing the same cards, like, not in the same order would just be ridiculous, you know? I mean, that's eight cards out of, what, 95 cards? It should be 100 cards, but it's, I think, probably 95, like, just, I don't know how many probabilities that is, but... That was the hand of today. Hollow ground though, man. Dang, bro. That is an eerie card right there. That's gnarly. I wonder what other... Uh, now I'm actually curious. I wonder what other MTG cards have a cross in it. And see, that's the other thing. It's like, is that seeking first the kingdom of God? Like, going it Because that's why I got this car. I literally bought this car for, like, 50 cents or something. I mean, it was, like, a dime or something. Because this is a card that people probably wouldn't even use. But, like, I saw that, and I was like, dude, I gotta get it. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Um, let's put some music on. The copyright free music stuff is kind of a pain, huh? Oh well. It's like I'm just like listening to the same thing over and over again. I've been noticing that's what a lot of streamers do too. <laughs> They're just like listening to the, the same out the same like soundtracks over and over and over again. But I don't know. It's like honestly, I think that if you were a musician and like you wanted to break into like the business or, or not business, but like the break into like maybe like getting your music like sh probably put it under the no copyright tab man if you're out there and you and you like make music like dude i know there's so many streamers and stuff that are like looking for that stuff like we'll just listen to this this is a game soundtrack from like the 90s and it doesn't have copyright so or probably it maybe does. I mean, it's someone probably made it, but like I don't know. It doesn't have copyright on this one right here, so that's why I've been listening to it. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Go check our PS5. I think what I might do is I might up the level. So 
prior, I used to do two fire hydrants from the pedals. But I kind of want to, excuse me, I kind of want to do, I kind of want to up it to three. Getting consistent with three, just getting good at triple, tip, triple fire hydrants. Try and let, 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 let's see like how long it takes for me to land a triple fire hydrant. Because prior to learning the fire hydrant, or actually once I started kind of learning it, I couldn't do other tricks unless I landed a double fire hydrant. And I was doing that to the point that now I kind of have them unlocked. Not unlocked, but like I can kind of do them frequently. I'm gonna try and maybe do a triple fire hydrant now. If I get maybe once I get past like 30, I might stop if I can't land it in 30 attempts. I'd like to say I can land it in like, I want to get just more consistent where I can just like do it first try, just boom, triple fire hydrant, boom, triple fire hydrant. What if I just land it first tee? I know that probably ain't gonna happen, but that'd be amazing. Why is it so hard? I want to just go first tee. It's like you mess up a little bit of the timing and the whole thing just falls apart. I don't know, man. People that have this trick on lock, like, like they're just so like in tune with the timing of, of everything. Brake timing, weight placement, balance, like. Stuffing. Dude, that was gnarly. Oh, I messed that up. I guess. Man, I guess I landed that in what? Eight tries? Seven tries? Alright, I'm gonna. 
that's the new that's the new goal now to so I was doing two and now I'm going to three so we're gonna start do it we're gonna start maybe starting the streams off and if I can't land a triple fire hydrant maybe I can't move on and until I can start just landing triple fire hydrants like you know in the beginning I think that might get me more in tune with it and then I can start upping it to four to five and then to eventually infinity or until you just get tired that's kind of cool I'm pretty stoked on that that was very very rare to do so I'll, I'll do it one more try let's see if I can get like two threes right right Boomerang to track stands. Do a uh, regular foot, uh, switch for Jared to regular for Jared. I didn't land one yesterday. I actually should have landed one yesterday. I didn't land one. So much nicer without sound, huh? When it's just like there's no blaring sound, I feel like so much nicer. Like I can I can think more, but it's gonna be so hot that I don't want it that way. It's uh, weird. It's weird with a cassette. I think it'd be a little easier with a free coaster because you have to wait for your pedal. I will say I think decades are way easier with a cassette though. And that's why I like to have it. One of the reasons. I just do not like the slack on a free coaster. Start doing more G turns in here.
I did that trick. This is. I need a couple of them. I can't. I don't know what they're on. Too many. Let's pull up. What's wrong with my diet? Dude, I like bent my braids, dude. Why is this side not working? Try just some uh, one wheel. I'm gonna wear gloves doing this. My hands get really dirty.
Oh, those are the colors I used fiberglass on. Ah, screw it, I'll just wash my hands after. I like forgot I did. It's hard. I'm not good at it. Turn.
Dude, that was crazy. I haven't even checked my street for me. I can get one. Some, some good one. You wash your hands. Kind of fun. Things get your hands really dirty. It's only been one hour.
That's probably like we practicing. Which bar are you five?
think we're going to go right outside for a little bit. Outside. It's kind of windy. Um, oh, you know what? That's what I should do. I should put that on a charger. Practice some cliffhangers outside. Um, it's nice and cool. Well, it's cooler today, so normally it's just scolding hot right now. Um, how am I gonna do this? Okay. Right. I should. I need to fix up that AC thing, so I don't have to do this. I have to walk all the way around. some cliffhangers. Oh, it's not too windy on the camera. It probably is going to be. see it. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's 
kind of getting into it.
the other part from trick seems like it'd be way easier huh but I guess not really it seems like it. this is another trick I've been after for a really long time
don't tip over, Poe. Come on.
Okie dokie. Oh, okay, back to the safe haven. <laughs> I can't really learn that, that trick. Um, that's why I was trying it outside because that's a trick I can't. Well, I actually can eventually learn it in here, but all the how-tos on how to do it, they say to uh, learn it in a straight line first, so. Let's turn this down. 